Today on Nerd of the Rings, we are talking about Thranduil, king of the woodland realm, father of Legolas. His origins begin much earlier than those of his realm, however. He is born during the First Age in the realm of Doriath in Beleriand. We don't know a specific date, but we know he's born sometime prior to the year 507 and is the son of Orofer. His name means Vigorous Spring. Thranduil and his father are among the Sindar, or Grey Elves. To put it simply, the Sindar were Teleri, who accepted the invitation to travel to Valinor, but never set foot in Valinor, instead founding the city of Menegroth and the realm of Doriath. So we know that Thranduil and Orofer are among the Sindarin Elves. Living in Doriath, their realm is protected by the Girdle of Melion, a fence of enchantment around their kingdom set by Queen Melion, who was a Maya, the same race of beings as the Wizards, Sauron, and the Balrogs. However, King Thingol is killed in a dispute with the Dwarves of Nagrod. They fought over the Nauglamir, a great necklace that combined the craftsmanship of the Dwarves with the greatest of the Elves, a Silmaril of Feanor. Rather than this being a shining achievement of their two races, it is fought over for years to come and the cause of much turmoil and bloodshed. After Thingol is killed by the dwarves in 502, Melion departs Middle-earth, causing her protection to vanish. Five years later, Doriath is utterly destroyed after the second kinslaying, in which the sons of Feanor attack in an effort to take the Silmaril by force. After Beleriand is destroyed during the War of Wrath, most of the Noldor and the remaining Sindar retreat to Linden. The Valar reinvite these elves to come to Amon, but Orifer and Thranduil, among others, are unwilling and remain in Middle-earth. Many of the Sindar eventually leave Linden and travel eastward. Thranduil and his father arrive in Greenwood the Great in 750 of the Second Age. There dwell the Sylvan Elves. These elves also originated from the Teleri, though they lingered in the Vales of Anduin during the Great Journey. Orifer is taken by the Sylvan Elves as their king and he founds the Woodland Realm. The few Sindar who come with him soon merged with the Sylvan Elves, adopting their customs and language, and taking names of Sylvan form and style. It is said that Orifer's household wishes to return to a simple existence, natural to the Elves before they had been disturbed by the Valar. Originally, Orifer's realm includes the south of Greenwood, including the capital of Amonlanc. However, throughout the Second Age, he and his people migrate north. The first movement north is beyond the Gladden Fields as Orifer wishes to distance himself from the increasing encroachments of the dwarves of Khazad Dûm, and due to his resentment of the intrusions of Celeborn and Galadriel in Lothlorien. Despite this, his people do remain in contact with their kin west of the Anduin. Eventually, they come to live in the Dark Mountains in north-central Greenwood. Although Orifer seeks to distance himself and his people from the affairs of the rest of the world, he sees the danger that Sauron poses and knows his defeat would bring about peace in Middle-earth. He, along with his son Thranduil, summon a large army, which joins with a smaller force of King Amdir's elves of Lorien, to create a great host of Sylvan elves. The Sylvan elves are described as being both strong and brave. Despite having poor armor and weapons compared with the Noldor, Amdir and Orifer are unwilling to submit to the supreme command of Gilgalad. Due to this rashness, they suffer heavy losses during the War of the Last Alliance. In the very first assault on Mordor in 3434 of the Second Age, Orifer and other brave and hasty Sylvan Elves rush forward before Gilgalad gives the signal to charge. Orifer is killed in this first battle, and Amdir and his troops are cut off and driven into the marshes, where half the host is killed. Due to the thousands of bodies buried there, this area would later be known as the Dead Marshes. In all, two-thirds of Orifer's army would die during the course of the war with Sauron. After Sauron is finally defeated seven years later, Thranduil leads the remainder of his people north, returning to the Woodland Realm where he is crowned king. Thranduil begins his reign as the Third Age begins in Middle-earth. Over a thousand years later, the Southern Greenwood becomes increasingly dangerous. Sauron, disguised as the Necromancer, comes to Amonlanc, Thranduil's former home in 1050 of the Third Age. By 1100, it is known as Dol Guldur, Hill of Sorcery. Evil creatures such as great spiders come to dwell in Greenwood, 
and the forest comes to be known as Mirkwood. In response to this threat, Thranduil leads his people north of the Forest River. There, Thranduil's halls are delved underground. It is said that his halls were fashioned partly in memory of Menegroth of Doriath, the former First Age home to him and his father. Sauron flees to the east for a time in 2063, when Gandalf first comes to Dol Guldur. After the watchful peace of nearly 400 years, Sauron returns to Dol Guldur in 2460, three years before Gollum obtains the One Ring. As we know, Sauron would be expelled from Dol Guldur by the White Council in 2941. The next we hear of Thranduil is during that same year. As the king and his people are feasting in the woods, they are repeatedly interrupted by a group of dwarves. After the third disturbance, the elves capture their leader, Thorin Oakenshield, who refuses to reveal the reason for their journey through Mirkwood. After their battle with the spiders, the rest of the company is also captured by the elves. Since they would not explain their presence in Mirkwood, Thranduil imprisons all the dwarves. As we all know, however, Bilbo would help the dwarves to escape. After the dwarves escape, Thranduil receives word of what occurred from the raft elves who return up the forest river, as it was their duty to transport goods via barrels between the woodland realm and Esgaroth. Now aware of the dwarves' quest, Thranduil states, No treasure will come back through Mirkwood without my having something to say in the matter, but I expect they will all come to a bad end and serve them right. Despite his belief that the dwarves were incapable of slaying Smaug, he soon receives word from his messengers, including birds, that the dragon had been killed and Lake Town destroyed. Thranduil, knowing that Smaug had possessed a massive treasure hoard, believing the dwarves to be dead, and desiring a share of the treasure, sets out towards the Lonely Mountain with a company of elves. On their way, they come across messengers from Bard, requesting aid for his destroyed town. Thranduil gives aid to these men, since they had been friends with the Wood Elves. He also leaves elven craftsmen to assist with building huts to fortify the people of Lake Town against the winter that was quickly approaching. Together, Thranduil and Bard lead their armies to the Lonely Mountain. To their great surprise, they arrive to find that Thorn and company had indeed survived Smaug's attacks and had taken possession of the mountain. Bard approaches the mountain seeking to parley with Thorin. The Dwarven King tells Bard, I will not parley as I have said with armed men at my gate, nor at all with the people of the Elven King, whom I remember with small kindness. In this debate they have no place. Be gone now, ere our arrows fly. And if you would speak with me again, first dismiss the elvish host to the woods where it belongs, and then return, laying down your arms before you approach the threshold. In response to Thorin's continued refusal, Thranduil and Bard besiege the mountain. Thorin sends word to his kin in the Iron Hills via raven messengers. Led by Dane Ironfoot, the dwarves begin their journey to the mountain. Bilbo, wishing to avoid bloodshed, brings Thranduil and Bard the Arkenstone in hopes it would cause Thorin to reopen negotiations. The elven king looked at Bilbo with a new wonder. Bilbo Baggins, he said. You are more worthy to wear the armor of elf princes than many that have looked more comely in it. But I wonder if Thorin Oakenshield will see it so. I have more knowledge of dwarves in general than you, perhaps. I advise you to remain with us, and here you shall be honored and thrice welcome. Bilbo instead returns to his friends. The next morning, Thranduil and Bard enter negotiations with Thorin. An angered Thorin eventually agrees to pay a 1 14th share of the treasure in exchange for the stone. Thranduil is reluctant to start a war over gold, but when the forces of Dane arrive the next day, before the trade for the Arkenstone has been made, the dwarves proceed to attack. At that moment, the orcs of the Misty Mountains and Grey Mountains, accompanied by a cloud of great bats, marches on the mountain. After skirmishing amongst themselves, the three commanders agree with Gandalf that the goblins are the enemies of all. They join forces, and so begins the Battle of Five Armies. Goblins and wild wolves against elves, men, and dwarves. Many elves, as well as their allies, are killed in the battle. Things are looking bleak when Beorn and the eagles arrive, turning the tide and helping secure an ultimate victory. Thorin, having been wounded in battle, dies shortly afterwards, having spoken his final words to his friend, Bilbo Baggins. Thranduil takes the sword Orcrist 
which had been taken from Thorin during his imprisonment in Mirkwood, and places it on Thorin's tomb. It is said that from that point on, it would glow in warning when foes approached Erebor. The treasure is divided among the Alliance. Bard gives Thranduil the emeralds of his ancestor Girion, the former Lord of Dale. As Bilbo and Gandalf depart, the Hobbit gives Thranduil a necklace of silver and pearls. Thranduil gives Bilbo the title of Elf Friend and returns with the survivors of his host to his home in Mirkwood. Later in the Third Age, on March 21, 3018, Aragorn brings Gollum to Mirkwood as he and Gandalf seek to interrogate him. After Gandalf questions Gollum, he is turned over to Thranduil to be kept prisoner. On June 20th, Sauron orchestrates an attack on the Woodland Realm by orcs. This raid is merely a ploy to provide a distraction and allow Gollum to escape. After months of captivity, Gollum escapes. Thranduil sends his son Legolas to Rivendell in order to inform Elrond of Gollum's escape. As chance would have it, Legolas arrives in time to take part in the Council of Elrond, where he is selected as one of the nine members of the Fellowship of the Ring. Nearly a year later, on March 15, 3019, Gondor is victorious in the Battle of Pelennor Fields. Later that same day, Sauron's army from Dol Guldur attacks Mirkwood. It is a long battle and much is ruined in a great fire, but in the end, Thranduil and the Elves of Mirkwood are victorious. Ten days later, on March 25th, the One Ring is destroyed. A few days later, Celeborn and Galadriel destroy Dol Guldur. On April 6th, Thranduil and Celeborn meet in the forest and rename it Erin Lasgallan, Wood of Green Leaves. They divide the woods between themselves and the Beornings and Woodmen. Thranduil rules the re-established woodland realm into the Fourth Age. Unfortunately, this is the last we hear of Thranduil. Presumably, he goes on to rule the woodland realm for some time. However, we don't know if he eventually sailed to Valinor or continued to dwell in Middle-earth. One thing we do know, however, is that his son Legolas would have a lasting impact on his people. It is said that the unprecedented friendship between Legolas and Gimli helped to reconcile Thranduil's people to the dwarves. For after the War of the Ring, both the dwarves of the Glittering Caves, led by Gimli, and the Wood Elves of Mirkwood, led by Legolas, come to Gondor, where they assist King Elisar in rebuilding and restoring the city of Minas Tirith. There, the Great Gate is remade in mithril and steel, the streets are repaved with white marble, and gardens and trees are planted all around the city, a shining achievement of their two races as dwarves and elves work together side by side. I want to say a huge thank you to all of my supporters who make these videos possible, including Wizard Level Patreon patrons Tom DeBombadil19 and Sky Carcass. If you want to learn how you can snag yourself some exclusive perks and support the channel, go to patreon.com slash nerdofthe rings. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.